Greetings and welcome to News TV. I am Makama Kama Senyama. Stories making the headlines. VP Mohadi says no Zimbabwean will die of hunger. In business, World Bank forecasts 2.7% growth for Zimbabwe. In sports, Zifa send message of support to Musona. Now for the news in greater detail. Vice President Kembo Mohadi has assured Zimbabweans that no one will die of hunger as government will make strides to channel funds towards food security. Mohadi said this while briefing journalists after a ketesu call on him by newly appointed UN Residence Coordinator Maria Ribeiro at a government's Munumutapa building in Harare on Friday. Well, we, 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 it's not the first time we're having a, a drought in Zimbabwe. And we've always said in, in government that uh, no one will die of hunger. And uh, still no one is not, still not going to die of hunger here in Zimbabwe. We are going to marshal all the resources that we have towards the provision of uh, food for our people. And if, uh, we, if need be, then we'll call other people like uh, the, the World Food Program to assist us. They'll come and assist us. But definitely we are, we are, we are, we are on top of the situation. We are not... Uh, we are, we, are, we, are, we, are, we are not just glossing over this issue. This is a real, it's a, it's a real issue. It's a real problem that we are, we are tackling with. His remarks comes at a time the World Food Programme has said Zimbabwe's hunger is now rated among the worst humanitarian crisis in the world. Exiled former cabinet minister Jonathan Moyo says President Emerson Mnangagwa and his ally ministers July Moyo and Owen Ngobe were implicated by a 2017 police probe as among the gods of machet violence by gangsters who continue to cause atrocities among mining communities in the country. Writing on Twitter Friday, Moyo claims in 2017, then Vice President Pelekezelam Poko showed cabinet some gruesome images of victims of machet wielding gangs in Kwekwe. Moyo further says that then President Robert Mugabe and his cabinet tasked then Home Affairs Minister Ignatius Chombo to get the police to investigate the matter with the probe linking the three Midlands top politicians to the heinous crimes. Horror tales of machet killers have dominated local media in the recent past with the colors murder of Kadoma police officer last month while an 80-year-old woman and his 16-year-old granddaughter were this week raped and murdered by suspected members of the gangs. Authorities at Townhouse are failing to maintain Harare's drainage system with ponds of water forming in parts of the central business district during the current rain season. Stormwater drains are clogged with garbage, dumped by litter bugs and council employees who sweep rubbish down the drain. However, Harare City Council acting spokesperson Innocent Ruende attributed the blockages to vendors whom he accused of keeping their ways inside stormwater drains. Three people are battling for their lives after consuming meat from animals that died of anthrax in Mosekwa Marundera district. The three cases were picked at Chimbuanda Clinic last week and were confirmed at Mausekwa Hospital on Monday. Marondera District Veterinary Officer Dr. Krama Manyetu said on investigation it was established that the affected three consumed meat from two cattle that died on December 30, 2019. The incident comes at a time when President Emerson Nangagwa angered citizens last week after telling them to eat vegetables and potatoes as meat was now unhealthy. In the courts, PUZ and Pain Limited Director Charles Namo Nyambuya has dragged his co-director Elton TC to court demanding US$650,000 following a fallout in session of shares. The two bosses of the once leading motor vehicle spares and maintenance firm entered into an agreement of the seizure of shares and rights of action on March 31, 2017, which agreement still subsists. In his summon filed with the High Court, Nyambuya accuses Mutisi of failing to secure his two upmarket houses, resulting in them being attached. He claims he is now poverty stricken and wants Mutisu to pay US$650,000, which he claims to be the value of the houses he lost. In business, 
The World Bank has forecast Zimbabwe's economy to grow by 2.7% this year, a growth that almost tallies with Finance Minister Mutulingube's 2020 national budget projection of 3%. This follows a contraction last year. However, shortages of foreign currency and electricity are expected to persist in 2020 and weigh down recovery of industry and services. We end with sports. The country's football governing body, Zifa, has sent a message of support to Warriors captain Knowledge Msona as he prepares to join a new club in the recently opened January transfer window. Musona has had a nightmarish spell at Belgian side RSC Anderlecht, but that will soon be a thing of the past as he is now training with the new club KAS Upen ahead of a proposed move. Zephyr's communications department took to Twitter to back the former Kaiser Chiefs hitman. Reporting for NewZimbabwe.com, I am Makanaka Masenyama. For this and more stories, visit our website www.newzimbabwe.com. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, News and TV.